everyone. Welcome to Mather Days. Math so fun, we do it on Saturdays. Uh, my name is Teresa Wills, and today we're going to talk a lot about um, some of the rational numbers that middle schoolers work with. However, today's um, tasks and routines are uh, accessible to elementary students. Just the, your conversation would change a little bit depending on the age of your students. Um, so let's go ahead and jump right in. Um, if you are new with us, welcome. Uh, you're gonna need access to the slides that I posted in the chat box. Um, I will frequently uh, share my screen for the recording, um, but you'll wanna click on that so that you can interact. And uh, if you want to join me on slide two, I have some contact information. Um, slide three, some other links. And slide four, this is the part where we start, um, you know, getting into getting to know each other. On slide four, if you would add a photo or a text box or a GIF or, you know, anything, how is your first day going? What news do you have for the group? And if you are new, um, we share a little bit of everything just to get to know one another. Um, and uh, so go ahead and share there. Again, the simplest way is um, using the text box. Alrighty, and as those are coming in, I'll ask a couple of you uh, to share. Um, Raha, uh, how was that first um, week of school? How are the third graders? Ooh, I'm going to throw that one out to the rest of the group too. Yes, um, they have a lot, a lot, a lot of energy. Um, I will say one of my favorite things if you can get outside is having them create their own hopscotch, but make it skip counting. So they might do hopscotch of threes, three, six, nine, twelve, and so on. And if that sidewalk chalk stays on the blacktop for a couple days before you know it, you have kids jumping their skip countings. Um, it's super fun too if you uh, like don't have a number. So you have three, six, nine, a blank one um 15 18 another blank one and it gets them kind of like pausing as they're hopscotching so um that's one of my favorites to do with elementary kiddos with a lot of energy but everyone else put your thoughts down in the chat for for raha um who's teaching fifth grade with two groups are you all departmentalized Yeah, well, welcome back. Um, and, um, you know, it is, I, I always love being able to teach at least two sections of math. Um, I find that it's great for me professionally to like teach a lesson again and see the little tweaks and stuff that I make. So I hope you have a great year. Mm hmm. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, Tanya, welcome. Uh, where are you coming from? Oh, welcome. I bet it is beautiful out there. Does San Diego still just have one uh, temperature? Um, I've only been out a couple of times other than being born there and being too little to appreciate it. <laughs> Mm 
Awesome. Um, and uh, Jeanette, tell us a little bit about your virtual and in-person. Is it concurrent at the exact same time or do you have some in-person and then some virtual? Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, I do hope that you enjoy the routine and rich task we're going to do today. There's a bank of many more on the Math or Days website. And if there's ever a reason to do rich tasks these days, um, it's because it, depending on your conversation you hold, you can make a, a task accessible to multiple grade levels of kids at the same time and uh, get each of them uh, to be able to increase their practice, knowledge, and fluency. So, um, with that said, let's dive right in. I'm happy to see everybody else who is here. We're going to look at the routine called Cube Conversations today. This comes out of Steve Wyborny stuff. Um, and on slide six, I put the link to Cube Conversations where he's got 80, yes, 8080 different uh, routine lessons of Cube Conversations ready to go. And also you can follow him on Twitter. Um, but the major focus of Cube Conversations um, is the, the examples on slide six, and he's got a beautiful video that explains all of this. Um, we want students to start to group and see things in different ways. Um, now, what's that going to mean for mathematics? Um, on slide six, instead of just saying there's so many cubes, they might say there's three plus three plus three plus nine. And so it's a great launch into combining like terms, a great launch into distributive property, associative property, and just different equations that are equal to each other. But we're going to start visually. So without further ado, I'm going to pop you into great breakout rooms for just five minutes, super short time. Um, and we're going to have a different one to look at. So group one will be on slide seven. Group two will be on eight. Group three will be on nine and so on. And your job as a group is to try and make four different ways of seeing this image um, so that you could explain it to somebody else. Um, if you click the cubes, you can change the colors. And I even put a little tip. Did you know that by pressing control and click, 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 it selects multiple cubes. Um, so without further ado, let's put you in some breakout rooms, let you get to know some folks. And again, this is a short, it is just gonna be five minutes um, in these breakout rooms. Here we go. They are set up. If you wanna go ahead and enter your room, you'll find two other folks that are there. Hello, Kathy. Good to see you. Um, we are going to jump right into uh, Cube Conversations. Um, and I just popped you into room one on slide seven. Um, if you want to jump right in, you can. If you want to get a little bit more direction from me, you can, whatever you're more comfortable with. Oh, no problem. Perfect. Mm hmm.
Welcome back everyone to the main room. Um, I'm sure at this point you can see a variety of ways that you can take this routine, even if it is just partner work. Um, on slide nine, you can see what one group did, how they had actually written out the multiplication. Um, and so, you know, if you are looking to um, have kids kind of using some of those different properties you're teaching, that's a great example of it. Other folks like on slide seven um, were explaining their thinking in mostly words here, some numbers and symbols also. Um, one of my favorite things to do when I am uh, doing cube conversations is to compare two that are similar so that kids can start to kind of get some strategies for thinking of these. Um, and so if you wanted to join me down on slide 11, I'm gonna show two that I thought were kind of similar in strategy. Oh, okay, give me just a minute here. I'll make sure that I'm sharing my screen also. Alrighty. Um, so on slide 11, I have um, two different pinkish purpley ones. If you were part of this group, could you just kind of give us the idea of like, what was your thinking when you got started? And maybe, you know, how was your thinking similar or different to your partner? Very cool. So this leftover cube looks different in some of the different models. There's the green cube, the orange cube. Oh, what about this one? Did you, If you did that yellow and red one, why is the green cube suddenly the leftover? Very cool. All right, folks, so there's a lot of different places you can go with this routine. I really love how interactive it is, and um, it's great for smart boards. It's great for, um, you know, just using on computers if you're doing virtual learning or synchronous learning. And let's jump into our rich task. On slide 12 is the reason why we do rich tasks. You'll see all eight of these today. And on slide 13 is our problem solving oath. I'm gonna read it out loud. If you would like to pledge this today, just put your name in the chat to make your pledge public. I, Teresa, promise to try my best. I will make sense of patterns and numbers. I will use manipulatives and drawings. I will make mistakes. I will ask questions. I will listen to other ideas. I will stay engaged by always trying to find another solution or representation. I am a problem solver. I make the world a better place. Awesome. Alrighty, we are going to jump into the task. Um, I recently played Monopoly with my kiddos and um, it, my kids are uh, third and fourth graders and they wanted to make their own games. So I was like, ooh let's bring out the math in this. And we started to look at um, kind of what makes a good game. Like if you win too often in a game, it's not really a great game. If you lose too often, it's not really great. There seems to be this balance. Um, 
And so on slide 14, if you want to learn more, um, there is a website that I use to get the idea about behavior of games and what makes a good game. Um, but for this task, I tried to use that and um, middle school standards um, so that we're going to design a game and there is a balance. And this is what you're going to have to, these are the bounds of your problem today. Five to 10% of your board game need to be penalty spots. So in Monopoly, that was like going to jail. Um, 10 to 20% need to be reward or good spaces. Like you get to draw again, or you get to um, collect $200 or something like that. And at least four fifths have to be neutral spaces. They're not good, they're not bad, they're just kind of part of the game. And the added piece, this is gonna make it a little harder, is there must be more reward than penalty spaces. Um, for this, there's a do first. You're gonna determine how many spaces are on your game board, and you're gonna create a key that lets us know how many are penalty, reward, and neutral. And there's also a little extension here. If you have additional time, you can check it out. Um, it, for virtual manipulatives today, on slide 15, I've suggested five to get you started, but you're not like, stuck with these five. You can use absolutely anything. And some people just prefer to use the Google slide shapes. So any of those things would work. I'm gonna go ahead and create those breakout rooms. Um, give me just one second to get those ready. Alrighty, um, yeah. A any kind of game board, absolutely. All right, I've got our breakout rooms. I'm gonna go ahead and hit open. And um, if you know what to do, head into your breakout room. If you have questions, hang out here in the main room. We'll be able to um, answer any questions that you might have. And I think someone had a question earlier. Um, Div Yonk, is that you? Did you have a question about um, how to start up? So what grade level do you teach? Are you a teacher? Oh, so this is a training for teachers to learn how to teach math online. Um, so that might be one of the reasons, um, you know, uh, so it, it's really meant for teachers.
Oh, no worries. Um, I was just saying that this is a training for teachers. So if you're not a teacher, it's probably not going to make a lot of sense. Gotcha. It's okay. Um, if your mom needs to email me, she can, okay? Not for kids, no. Sure thing, bye. Hi there group. It looks like you have nailed down that you're going to go with 50 spaces. I'm curious how you got that number. So it, finding out the number of neutral spaces, it sounds like you reverted back as being a strategy for like, it's easier if you do neutral first. Is that the case and why? Cool.
it is a fun one for adults because we like things to be really beautiful and perfect and pretty and this problem is not pretty it's weird it's uncomfortable cool Yeah, so you know, middle school probability is is taught in terms of fractions and percentages, and um, it just goes in so nicely here. I know some people are like, "Well, what do I do when my kids are done?" Um, and so this kind of has a natural like lead into. Hey there, team. All right, how did you get to a game board of 25 pieces? And did you pick any other numbers before 25? Was 25 just the first one that happened to work or did you have to tweak something else? Very cool. All right, keep it up. Now, did you just, that decision to start with neutral, was that something you had to kind of go through a little um, a trial and error to figure out that that was a good strategy? Or did you just know at the get-go that that was a good strategy?
Hi, group. All right, I'm curious. It looks like you went with 20 pieces um, or, or spaces. Why 20? Why not 21? Why not 500? Like, why'd you go with that number? Wait, why? You just said any multiple of 20, 40, 60 is, why not 10, 20, 30, 40? It's, it's cool. It. Absolutely. And Raha, um, one of the tools in here, um, I was curious if anyone's going to use the virtual manipulatives, but the hundreds chart is really nice because you can take that four fifths or that eight tenths and you can just turn all those like orange. And now now you can see the number of pieces left to um, be able to change into like good and bad ones. And it goes off of that hundreds chart, which makes that um, decimal and fraction and percent equivalency easy to understand. <laughs> we only have about one more minute left, um, but this is perfect. I think you guys like totally nailed it. Um, I'm going to be asking you all to share why you chose 20. Um, so I'm going to head back to the main room, but that's what we'll be doing at the share time. Mm hmm. Hello everyone and welcome back to the main room. It looked like uh, different groups had really different ways of attacking this problem, um, but it looked like I saw a lot of smiles and head nods, so I hope it was enjoyable. Um, you know, from a teacher perspective, I wanna be really transparent. Um, on slide 21 are the two major questions that if students are able to answer the two questions on slide 21, I know they have a good sense of ratio proportion um, and the way that the fractions and the percents are kind of working uh, and coexisting together. So that's the guide. That's where our conversation is going to be going. And um, I did want to ask um, certain groups why they picked the number of spaces the number of places on their board as they did um, and if we can start off on slide 18 this group said that they are going to have 20 spaces um, and lisa could you tell us why you chose 20 and not 21 or 60,000? Cool. 
Cool. So we, we know that 20 will work. It seems that, that everything fits um, the rules for 20. Um, but let's increase it a little. On side 16, they went up to 25 spaces. Why did you choose 25? Very cool. And I think you guys are, are maybe starting to work on another one with your board. Because on the left, I see that you said two penalty, three reward. Um, and it looks like your game board, you're, you're still making the penalties and rewards for that. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Um, nice. Let's see. Um, on slide 17, now, nope, on slide, do, do, do. Here we go, 19. Um, now we have even more spaces. Um, how many spaces did you all pick? And uh, tell me about your percentages. Uh, so you, um, in order to figure out what they were out of 50, you kind of went up to the 100s. Um, kind of just put that little fraction in there. Um, so the neat thing here is now that we have more spaces, there's more options available. So if everyone <clears throat> could just pause for a minute, they chose four sad faces and six yays, and that met the requirement. What other combinations of sad faces and yays could work? Let's give everyone like a solid minute to think here. This one's a little tricky. And you're going to put them in the chat box as a chat waterfall. So don't do it yet. Like you can put it in there, but don't hit enter. Um, what are other combinations other than four and six, four sad, six yays, that could also work?
If you think you see another combination that could work on this board, feel free to hit enter at any time. So Daniel, you said three and seven. Um, why do three and seven work? Um, so, um, you know, we, we mentioned that uh, four and six work because that's the four is the 8%, um, the six is the 12%. Um, how could we be sure that three and seven work? Cool. Um, there's other combinations that don't work for this. Um, you know, it might work in terms of they will add up to equal 10, but we also have those percentage bounds to go around. Um, so Lydia, you mentioned not one and nine. Now I originally had one and nine written down on my paper. Um, and it, it took me a minute. What did your brain do to decide that one and nine would not work? Awesome. And, you know, sometimes we would see something like that written out in um, a table. So you might have, you know, a number of pieces that are neutral, positive, negative, and we could see the percentages along with it. Um, slide 18 kind of has that happening. So if we created a big table, um, we would be able to see all the possibilities and which ones would work and, and not. And so if you're looking to kind of extend that into pre-algebra early graphing, we could go that route. Um, and then on slide 17, this group here um, had another one with 50. And um, just curious uh, how you all decided the number of positives and negatives. Very cool. And here we can see our seven and three um, and more. Uh, so again, the, the major components of this that I wanted to ask um, were, first of all, what's the least number of spaces that could exist on this game board? And our current least is on slide 18. That had 20 slots. Is there anything that could be less than 20? Um, if so, um, what could it be? Feel free to turn on your mic if you have an idea. You can use a chat box also. Can we do it less than 20? All right, so we'll, we'll do a, a duplicate of slide 18. Let's work with 10. Um, Raha, you might have to help me out with um, with this one here, but I think we might be able to delete some of these rows. There we go. All right, there's our 10. Anyone feel free to play around on slide 19, see if we can make 10 work. Anyone else have numbers? What other numbers do we think might be able to? I kind of think 15 might be able to work. What do you think? Let's uh, slide 19. I'll, I'll put a, a, fifth, whoops, a 15 frame. I wonder if that'll work. So at this point, feel free to play around with some other numbers. If you think you've come up with a generalization of why something could work or could not work, let us know.
All right, so Lisa and anyone else who wants to keep working on slide 19, you can make copies if you want your own. But I see somebody typing a generalization on slide 20. If that was you, we'd love to hear it. You're already getting a heart from someone. Um, you say it won't work. How come? Right, so right now we're only getting one, and that is 10. I'm kind of changing up our uh, table that was so nicely written there. But this 15, would that one work? So there's some really cool models that we can do with this four fifths, especially if we're scaffolding it for um, some other learners. And one of those models is, um, and I'm on slide 19, is to constantly show copies of four fifths. So I'm gonna move uh, Raha's little, um, I think these are, are yours, little uh, prizes over to the side. And then I'm gonna keep shading in rows of pink that are four fifths. And there's another row of pink, four fifths. So now I can be convinced that this is still four fifths shaded pink. Um, and I've got more good than bad. Does it work? And I see someone's typing down here. If that was you, what do you think? Did, did we did we make it? Did we not? Yeah, between 10 and 20. And so if we wanted to see if there was any more, we could t continue with this model. Um, I'm gonna add a row below, insert row below. Um, and again, if I color four out of the five pink, we can constantly see like what our leftover is. Um, and if we can, you know, manipulate that leftover. Um, Awesome. The other big question to ask was describing the pattern of all possible total spaces. And we kind of did that when we looked at what other ones would work with the 50, what other options would work um, with 15 and more. Um, but what I really love about this problem is that we can talk about 5%, 10%, 20%, 10 and four fifths when our whole could equal 15 or 20 or 25 or 50. Um, and so there really is a lot of converting to prove to other students that like, yes, my game does work. Um, I hope you enjoyed today's activity. Um, I think it's one that kids would really relate to, especially, um, you know, you've got that extension. So if you have kids finishing early, it's not like, okay, well, what am I gonna do now? Um, they can add things like dice and cards. They can look at probability of those um, and they can look at the probability in terms of fractions and um, decimals and percents and more. Uh, so that was today. Uh, on slide 24, I have some other math or days coming up. We're going to take off the holiday weekend next weekend, but then we'll pick up with elementary fractions, primary number sense, and um, definitely sign up on uh, September 25th for David Porras, uh, who's going to um, talk with us about Mathagon. Um, and if you want to see anything else from another grade level, another topic or more, pop it on slide 25. Um, but otherwise, I hope you all have a great rest of your day, rest of your weekend, and thanks for joining me for Mather Days.
Absolutely. Um, and that was kind of the, the heart of making it. So I was working with my son on this and we were trying to come up with something like Monopoly, which by the way, Monopoly has 40 spaces. There are three bad, two taxes and a go to jail. Um, but the neutrals aren't really neutral. And we were trying to decide if free parking was a benefit or not, because some games like you get all the money in the middle. Some people don't play that way. Um, and so it came out of that. And I, I started looking at the fractions that he's working on in fourth grade, um, but that he's interested in. Um, and so the heart of this game came out of it's a task first, not an afterthought of creating cards where you're doing math problems. So thanks for noticing that, Kathy. Ooh, prime and composite. I have a great, great task for that. Let's pop it in on the, the calendar. What, uh, let's see, what's after September 25th? We'll do prime and composite then. Um, so, and I'll give you my experience with this. Um, I don't know my multiplication facts. There's at least like seven or eight of them that I just don't know. Um, seven times eight is one of them. Every single time I go 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 4, 5. Like I do that every single time. Um, and I'm very kinesthetic. I also have a math degree, um, and got a PhD in math education. So like, that's kind of my own perspective. Now, I'm also really efficient at getting them. I will use my fingers. I will count on every time because I trust it. And when I teach factoring in Algebra 1, I'm really good at them. But then I forget them, and I don't know why. So there's a little bit of my background. Um, there are some phenomenal multiplication uh, cards with, um, who does it? Is it Math for Love? Yep. There's two games that I adore and they're called Prime Climb and Multi. Um, those games I play with my own kids. They are, they're great for, you know, second graders who really haven't done much with multiplication. Um, and um, they can play Prime Climb, they can play Multi. Uh, the more they play it, the more often they say, oh, Kathy, you've got the multiplication by heart. If you look at these, it's all based on that visualization from Prime Climb. And um, I use the, uh, let me see if I can get an example. There's a great little multiplication chart that comes in Prime Climb, and it doesn't look like any other multiplication chart you've ever seen. And there's so much understanding. So let's put links in. If you all have links, throw them in the chat there. Um, Let's see if I can show this multiplication chart. Here we go. Uh, so this is the multiplication chart that I'm talking about. Oh, they have a poster. I'm going to be getting this now. Um, and the important thing to notice about it is it doesn't, it doesn't really show you. It doesn't say like 6 times 6 is 36. It's got a picture of 36 in this kind of funky looking array, and all these colors mean things.
You know, Martha, another thing that you can do with that card um, is if you blank out the ones that you are working on them with. So like for me, you're going to want to blank out seven times eight and just blank out like five of them. But because I have the the chart and I see the patterns, I can go above it. I can go below it next to it. What you're actually teaching them is seven times eight is the same thing as seven times seven with some more. You can just keep counting on. So you're going to be teaching them those strategies, but not leaving them just like out with no supports. Um, so I'm a big fan of the blanking. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Um, so that kind of makes me think that maybe they need to create the multiplication chart themselves if they're not um it, yeah because it sounds to me like um they were in this case given a scaffold that maybe they haven't fully processed what that scaffold is so when they make it mm -hmm, or you can even give each kid yeah you can give each kid a multiple and they have to go to everybody else's chart. So I'm the threes and I'll go to everybody else's and I'll do three, six, nine, twelve, And I'll put that on there in a different color so they can really start to see those. Um, and that helps them with their pattern recognition. Um, anytime you can get them to create them. And I definitely would recommend that Prime Climb uh, poster also. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, um, I'm i forever going to elementary schools with sidewalk shock and just making the little skip counting. It looks like hopscotch, but just a bunch of circles that they jump to. And yeah, when you leave that blank one there, they, they, they get in a momentum and then they pause, and they just kind of linger and they do the plus three and then they, they keep going, but they love it. So yeah, um, I, I might be able to find you some pictures of when I did that. I'll probably bring it for next math or days, but it's great fun to just go out there. And then the kids start using the sidewalk chalk. They they add to it. Um, yeah. Any other questions?
This is fantastic. Um, the other thing I might recommend is um, Building Math Minds on Facebook. If you if you just look up Build Math Minds, uh, fluency is a big topic there. So you might check that out also. Um, I, I watch that on Facebook and um, definitely, I mean, there's, there's a lot of um, different ways people are thinking about it too and opinions that they have about it. Um, but uh, yeah. Oh, I found my, my pictures. I'm going to put it up here for you. Whoops. Those are all of them. Hang on. Oh, there goes my internet. Um, so this is um, a, a group of kids at school and you can see the little like multiplications they were going by I think sixes this day um, and it's just circles with numbers on it um, and in 